Hey everyone, this is the Sony A6700, which means Sony did not forget about the APS-C line because we finally have an upgrade to the A6600, which is so exciting. So in today's video, I wanna share with you my thoughts and review on this camera body for both photo and video by testing it out at a real world portrait photo shoot. I have one crop frame lens and five full frame lenses that I'm gonna be using throughout today's video. So let's get started with some autofocus tests. For these tests, I'm using the G 15 millimeter F 1.4 APS C lens, this would be the full frame equivalent of about 22 millimeters. The A6700 is an APS-C hybrid camera body with a 26 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. This camera features the new AI autofocus system first introduced by the A7R5, which means it has real-time recognition AF since it features an AI processing unit just like the A7R5. It's cool to see this new AF tech in an APS-C body, especially considering the price point of the camera. We have 759 phase detection AF points and during these autofocus tests here and the entire photo shoot, I'm relying on continuous autofocus with a wide focus area to let the camera do all the work so we can see the true performance. As expected, Human AF is absolutely fantastic. It's super fast and extremely sticky on the subject. In terms of autofocus, this camera is like a baby A7R5, as it also includes animal, bird, insect, car, train, and airplane AF in both photo and video mode, which again is really awesome to see in an APS-C camera body from Sony. I took the camera out with various lenses to test each of these AF modes out and share with you some footage of what it looks and feels like to rely on autofocus to capture photo and video. Here we have Evian Olive, which I use the GM 35mm f1.4. I find animal AF is stronger in video mode compared to stills. In video, I really enjoy that it keeps the focus point on the eyes or head even when they turn around, so I know autofocus is ready to go when they turn back around so I don't miss my shot. In stills mode, Animal AF with close-up animal portraits does a decent job at getting iris focusing, but there are still a handful of photos with focus on their fur. You'll also notice I did get the high temp warning and the camera stopped recording video when I had the Atmos attached and the screen closed indoors in the sun. Outdoors in the sun, I didn't have these heating issues. I think Animal AF did a great job at finding this kangaroo also that was hidden in the bushes. As always, I did some extreme wildlife photography at a park. <laughs> These are all with the G200 to 600 millimeter lens. Just like animal and human AF, bird AF is pretty reliable and does a solid job at keeping focus on the subject in video mode and does the same thing in stills mode. As you might know, I am a portrait photographer, not a bird photographer, so having these AF modes makes it really easy to capture different styles of photography. I'm also sharing some of the photos I've captured with each of these focus modes as well, so you can see sharpness and image quality. Now, moving on to our photo shoot, our model today is Natalie, and I'll leave her Instagram linked in the description if you want to see more of her work. Dan is filming the behind the scenes, and I'll leave his page linked as well. I'm starting off on the G20mm f1.8 lens, which is a full frame lens, and gives us a 30mm full frame equivalent focal length on the A6700. And don't forget to switch this video over to watch in 4K so you can see all the details of the images I'm sharing. The files coming from this camera are so nice, they're clear and super clean, especially at base ISO, which stick around because I do also have a low light test for you later on in the video where I share with you a photo at every single ISO of this camera. Something new I have been doing with my camera reviews is leaving the white balance on auto to see how it performs, as Sony have claimed they have made some improvements in auto white balance since the A6600. And then should we try like a full body shot as well would be cool. Oh yes, that's so nice there. And you can see all the leaves on the ground too. We are shooting in a mixture of shade, slight backlight and strong backlight. And I found the camera did a good job at keeping a neutral white balance in every lighting situation for flattering skin tones. Also, slightly off topic, but how nice is the G 20 millimeter F 1.8? Normally I use it for vlogging on full frame and I always think it's so sharp, it really should have been part of the GM line. Anyway, let's not give Sony any ideas about the pricing of this lens. I might change my lens for these and get like a little bit more of a close-up shot. Sure. 
Next, I'm using the GM 35mm f1.4, which gives us the full frame equivalent of around 52mm. This camera has five stops of image stabilization. We do have plenty of light at our photo shoot though, so I wasn't able to completely test this out. I do have handheld video shots later on to see IBIS though. Since this is a pre-production camera, I only have access to the JPEGs at the moment while we wait for raw support to be available. I am still using my presets to edit the photos, I just have to adjust the contrast a little to suit the fact that they are JPEGs. We have some different file type options. Instead of choosing between compressed or uncompressed RAW, the A6700 only has the RAW file type option between lossless compressed or compressed. In JPEG, you also have the option between JPEG, HIF420, and HIF422. Yeah, that's beautiful. This camera felt extremely easy to use at a portrait photo shoot thanks to the autofocus system, which I can completely rely on as usual with Sony cameras ever since the release of the A1. Not only that, but the shooting speed felt great too. I fired off a few burst shots throughout the photo shoot to see how the camera would handle it. It shoots up to 11 frames per second in electronic shutter. In compressed RAW and using a V90 SD card, the camera has an endless buffer. In lossless compressed RAW using the same card, Hard, you can shoot about 20 to 60 images depending on your shutter speed before it will drop a frame but then it allows you to keep shooting another five to seven images at a time before the buffer drops a frame again. It's pretty impressive and seems like this camera will be able to handle shooting in some high speed scenarios. One of the first things I noticed and appreciated while using this camera for photography is that it is very comfortable to hold, which brings me to ergonomics. The A6700, to me, looks like an updated version of the A7C body, which I know wasn't everyone's favorite camera body with ergonomics, but they have fixed some of the main issues it had. First of all, the grip of the A6700 is thicker, so it feels much better to hold. It's still short, so my pinky has nowhere to go, but overall, I really enjoyed the new grip. They also added a front dial, which I sorely missed in the A7C. Aside from that, this camera body has the same amount of C buttons as the A6600, however, they've swapped around record and C1. We have a new photo, video, SQ dial, which is separate to the mode dial. And while it doesn't have a joystick, I personally find the AF modes are so reliable that it's not really needed. On camera bodies like the A7 III or A7C with the older Sony autofocus system, a joystick was a must for me, but not so much with the newer AI focusing nowadays. Let me know what you think in the comments. It's getting windier. <laughs> I'm gonna switch my lens over to the 24 millimeter, which is the full frame equivalent of 35. I get some nice dust into the sensor. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe we should go back down. I feel like it's not that windy. Yeah, or we can sit in the car park too because I was more sheltered, I think. Should do a little bit shady would be cool. So maybe here in this sunny pad. Yeah, that's cool. The A6700 unfortunately only features a single card slot, probably because Sony would prefer you to go with the FX30, A1 or A7R4 or 5 for crop frame professional use. But at least it is a UHS-2 SD card slot, which is good to see. Sony also claimed this camera is dust and moisture resistant. I would like to put it out there that I would like to start seeing IP ratings for weather sealing from now on, as pretty much every Sony camera has some sort of weather sealing in its construction, but it would be so much better to have a scale to see where it sits in comparison to their other bodies. One thing I hope doesn't find its way to more Sony camera bodies is the new on and off switch positioning. The on and off toggle is slanted a little too far to the right, which makes switching the camera off specifically feel awkward as your finger hits into the grip of the camera and you have to change your whole grip of the camera just to flick that switch. I prefer the on and off toggle Sony has been using on all their cameras in the A7 line where it sticks further out towards the left and it's easier to flick. A few other things featured in this camera, the A6700 uses the same FZ100 battery as most modern Sony bodies, and it has the same ports as the A7C, including microphone jack, headphone jack, USB-C, and micro HDMI. Hi, puppy. You're so cute. <laughs> There's so many dogs here, I love it. I have to be far away for this one. Oh, so cool. 
Before we check out video, I have one last full frame lens, which is the GM 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 Mark II, which on APS-C gets us 105 to 300 millimeters. The viewfinder of the A6700 has a better magnification ratio and a higher refresh rate, making it look super smooth while using it, which is easier on the eyes. The A6600 has a 180 degree tilt screen compared to the A6700, which has a flip screen. <laughs> This brings us to video. While the A6600 was heavily a photo camera, I feel like Sony are making a big emphasis on the A6700 video features to make this more of a hybrid APS-C camera with a balance on both photo and video. These video shots taken by Dan are all handheld with the GM 24mm f1.4. Just like photo, Dan is making use of IAF with continuous autofocus and a wide focus area to let the camera do all the work and we can see its performance with human AF. Just in case you skipped past it, my examples of animal and bird AF in video mode are back towards the beginning of this review. These are all shot in a cine tone and is ungraded. It's a little on the green side, but overall pretty nice. Now I have some video human AF tests with the APS-C G 15mm f1.4 lens. The A6700 is capable of 10-bit 422 video footage in up to 4K 120p. Just like photo, it does an amazing job at keeping focus on a subject even when they're moving around quickly. When shooting in 100 or 120 FPS, there is a significant 1.6x crop. In 100 or 120p, you also don't have access to active steady shot or focus breathing compensation. You can also load your own LUTs into the camera, but unlike Lumix where you can burn in your LUTs if you choose, in Sony you can only use your LUTs as view assist. S-Log3, which has a base ISO of 800, is now in the main menu instead of being an option in picture profiles, which is a bit convoluted to get to, especially if you're used to the A7 range. And unless I'm missing something, there doesn't seem to be a way to assign it to a custom button for easy access either. This camera includes the new auto framing, which was first seen in the ZV-E1. This is a pretty fun feature to play with, and here are some examples of what it looks like so you can get an idea of quality since it does crop the original image. Honestly, this is a pretty cool feature, and even though it can be a bit jolty at times, I can see this coming in handy for solo creators. So we have to test out vlogging on this camera as well, which is exactly what I'm doing right now on the G 15 mm f1.4, which is actually a really nice focal length for vlogging on this camera. And I'm gonna walk around a little bit so we can see what the stabilization looks like. This is with active steady shot off, first of all, just for an example. And yeah, I'll just walk a little bit to the side. I'll bring the camera towards me, away from me. We'll see if it wobbles anywhere. And now we have active steady shot on. So it does crop in a little bit so you can see what that looks like with my arm fully outstretched. And again, I'm walking around so you can see what it looks like. We'll see if it jellies or jellos in the corners. We actually saw some kangaroos out there in the bush and we were getting a shot of them which you would have seen right at the beginning of this video, which is so cool. So I've turned active steady shot back off. So we're back in standard steady shot and I'm gonna do a microphone test. So, so far what you've been hearing is my love mic. Now I'm gonna to switch to the external microphone I've attached to the camera so you can hear what that sounds like. And finally, we have the internal microphone of the A6700. So I'll talk for a little bit. We have a fair amount of traffic noise in the background. So we'll see how much that cuts through, how much my voice cuts through, how prominent I sound. And that's about it for our microphone test. This camera features five stops of IBIS, you can see a fair amount of movement in the handheld shots Dan captured of Natalie with active steady shot off, so we don't crop the image. However, the clips look great when slowed down, so it's definitely still usable in this way. I think this is a really fantastic crop frame camera from Sony with a great feature set for both photo and video. Let me know your thoughts. Finally, last but not least, we have our low light test as usual. I took these all on the GM35. I took photos with both noise reduction off and set to normal so we can see them side by side. I think with noise reduction on normal, the files are usable up to ISO 10,000. With no noise reduction, I think up to ISO 4,000 is usable even though we are starting to see some colorful noise. 
That is all I have for today's review on this camera. I really hope you enjoyed that and found it helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.